Hi there, welcome to another quick podcast. Now this podcast is actually focusing on using a piece of software called classmarker.com which is located at www.classmarker.com um, and I'm using this site to um, just set tests for my students that they can do in class or at home. Um, the tests are multiple choice or true or false or may involve students actually answering short questions. Um, the advantage being that they can do this online um, the tests are automatically marked and then I receive um, uh, an Excel spreadsheet with the marked information on there that I can use to inform my teaching and I can provide feedback with that etc etc so first of all I'm going to quickly show you how to actually get it onto the site so you go to the page and just here you click register free and I'm not going to go through that process because it's pretty straightforward but once you register you will actually create yourself a username and password which you can enter here and then log into the site So the first thing I'm actually going to do now, I've logged in, is to show you how to create a test. So to do that, I'm just going to click My Tests. And I'm going to click Create a New Test. So I need to give my test a name. So I'm just going to give my test this uh, name of um, Year 9 Plants, which is the topic my Year 9s have been doing recently. So yeah, I can click Add New Test. I'm just ignore the category bit, I'm not too bothered about that. And then it's going to take me to this page. So test has been created, question this test, view options. And that's what I'm going to select now. And I could add existing questions from a question bank if I've got a question bank, but I'm assuming that you're going to be new users to this like I am. And I'm going to basically say, okay, I actually want to enter new questions directly into this test. So I'm going to click that. And it's now going to take me to an option of where I can start creating the questions. So here I've got some options. I can choose between any of these, multiple choice, multiple response, meaning that there might be more than one correct answer from, say, an option list of five. Um, true or false, free text, where they can write whatever they want, uh, punctuation, uh, and even an essay, where it could be like an essay-style question. Um, I've not used that one so much myself, but uh, it seems pretty straightforward, pretty good. I guess it depends what you actually want to do. So I'm going to choose to start off with multiple choice, and I'm going to start with the question, um, which part of a plant is involved in reproduction? Okay, and then I just need to type in the options. So I'm going to type in roots, I'm going to type in leaves, I'm going to type in the correct answer, I hope you know this one, is flower. And that's one might be stem. Okay. Now I've got my four options. Now I just need to choose the correct one to, set, to indicate that's the correct one. I'm not going to bother doing it to five. And I'm happy with everything else. Randomize answers. Okay. Yep. Yeah, points to the question. I can change how many points it's worth. If I want to make some worth more than others, if they're more difficult, um, add test question. So there's my first question on this test actually done. So as well as multiple choices, I've already said you could put different things in there and um, I'm basically going to leave that up to you guys to, to play with and have a look for yourself. It's pretty straightforward and pretty self-explanatory, but flick me a message on YouTube or wherever else if you want to find a little bit more information about that. So now I've actually created a test. Now what I actually want to do is I want to click my classes because what I'm going to do now is actually create my class. So I've got my test, but now I need to click create my class. So I'm going to my classes menu. And I've got some classes down here already, but I'm going to go down to create new class. And I'm going to give my class a name, so um, let's call it 9J5, which is one of the classes that the school I'm teaching at right now. I'm just going to click, click create class. And it takes me to this menu. So I'm all good with this, don't need to delete anything. But I do need to add some learners. So what I actually want to do now is I want to go to administer learners down here, give that a click, and this is going to allow me to actually enter the names of the different people in the class, which is pretty straightforward, it's really just typing in a few things, it's a bit of a pain to start off with, once it's done, it's done, um, so I'm just going to go straight down here, and register learners in a batch, I'm just going to add them in, so first name, comma, last name, so I'm going to say, okay, Joe, blogs, Fred 
blogs lots of brothers and sisters in this school um, I know let's have another one Susan Boyle hopefully she's not in my class can't stand the lady singing to be honest with you and Janet Jackson this is going to be a really eclectic class cracky could you imagine that group okay so I've typed those in nice and straightforward and then here it says passwords you can choose one easy to remember password for every learner or class marker can automatically assign individual passwords it will consist of random letters for example but if you choose your own password it must be six to twelve characters long now what I do here is I actually allow it to assign a specific password for each individual learner so when I want my students to do a test I actually give them the password that they need and, and then they can enter that in and it's sort of like a way of making sure that they're doing it themselves they're not just getting somebody else to enter the password in from their own computer and so on it's maybe not 100% foolproof but it's something I do so I click register learners here and in a second it's gonna take me to there we go their first names and last names of the user word so what I actually usually do here is I just shade all this in and I cut and paste it over to a word document which is simple as doing this and then basically I just cut those out in little rows give them to the students so that they've got something that they can use so that's a nice and straightforward um, and now I've got that all done I've got my test there now what I actually want to do is actually assign a test so I actually go down to this menu here and I click assign test so I've clicked assign tests and that brings me to this screen here so all I need to do I can ignore this stuff at the top and just scroll down and down here are all the different tests I've created and if I find the test that I was looking for which is year 9 plants I can just choose the test settings and then assign so I'll give that a click and assign this test now yep that's all good choose the settings below for this test and assign this test now so I'm going to just quickly go through the settings make sure I've got that right choose what learners will see after completion I don't actually want them to see any score or results I just want this as a diagnostic test so I'm just going to leave that as it is but you can choose whether the students get the feedback or not and that might be um, suitable in different situations give questions in a random order I don't really want them in a random order it's fine as they are number of questions to be displayed per page I just want one at a time and um, but I could change that if I want to just using the drop down menu practice mode again I'm using this as diagnostic test so I only really want them to have one attempt uh, and I'll be telling them that in the instructions um, time limit 25 minutes that's a little bit long for this test because it's only going to be a, a couple of questions so I'm just going to change that to five minutes um, and keep scrolling down save and finish later on I, I want them to do it all at once I guess if you're doing a long test you might make it um, you know they could do it in different sections and finish it later on um, show feedback and corrections during the test again I'm not interested in that but you could turn that on so you're giving students or the, the instant feedback that they might want allow learners to go back during the test I again want them just to keep going forward but I can change that must select an answer yep I want them to do that so I've got on there must answer correctly to continue no I'm just happy for them to go all the way through and the set the pass mark well I'm not actually going to set a pass mark I'm going to leave that alone I'm not going to put anything in any of those boxes but this is all options for you um, brief instructions following the test okay yeah I'm going to turn that on um, will allow has time limit okay that sounds pretty good and test availability show testing class yep so they'll be able to see that so I want to sign that test now I'm happy with all that information you can play with it I bet you created a, a set of like practice tests um, just to see what happened really so that now if I give my um, learners and those logins if I actually quickly check one of those out zoom upon this a little bit let's just try logging in as Joe so I'll just quickly log out of here and Joe's in this class so it should be pretty straightforward okay and log in Joe 21443 so Joe just goes here password for Joe K V E L F J N Let's see what happens now then. No, don't want you to remember that. And hopefully this works. <laughs> it isn't being recorded, give it another click. I 
doing something. Here we go. And it takes Joe to this particular page. So year nine plants start the test. Okay. Right. Nervous, obviously. It's been a while since I've done a test. Okay. There's the information. So I've got uh, one question, five minutes. Can only take one once. One question per page. Can't go back. And it will not let you finish without answering them all. So I'm going to start right now because I'm an eager learner. I'm going to give my teacher the feedback he wants. And it's going to take me to a page, hopefully where I can actually start this test. My experience of using this software so far is actually pretty quick. Um, it's not been too bad, I suppose, this morning. The part of the plant which is involved in reproduction, I'm thinking that that is a flower. So I'm going to just click that. And this one here is saying finish. It would often, if there was more than one question, it would just say next question. So finish. And I'm now confirming that I've finished. And hopefully that'll be the end of this. And the test has been taken. Okay, cool. So I've finished. I'm going to log out. And then what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to log back in as me so that we can actually look from the teacher's point of view at, um, you know, how do you get your results for, the, the, for your class, etc., etc. So, once we log in, it should be pretty straightforward. I should be able to see what's going on pretty quickly. So here we go. So if I quickly go to my classes, And I'll just find the class that I'm interested in, which is my year nine, 9J5. So I click test and results. Now, I've only really obviously had one student actually do this. So I'd wait until all of them had done it, or I could do it until I could check when one's done it if I wanted to. But um, class results, so i just check the class results for the year nine plants test. And it'll take me through to this there, and it'll give me the results there that oh yeah, there's Joey did his on the 23rd of March got 100% well done Joe or I can just quickly go to export results download all scores to Excel or results to Excel so that'll be questions and answers so this will, this will actually tell me where they which ones they got right which ones they got wrong which is what I really want to know and quickly do that and quickly go open and Bob's my uncle hopefully I have actually got an uncle called Bob, which is quite interesting. He's actually called Robert, but you know. Um, file trying to open is different format. Okay, I'm just gonna say, do you wanna open the file? I trust the site, I've used it a few times. I'm not particularly worried. So I can now see, it's in a bit of a weird sort of format. My well, question one there, points scored, and this is for Joe. So what I suggest um, is you, you, you get your whole class test of results like this, and by tweaking the spreadsheet a little bit and playing around with it, you can move the results around to a format that's more pleasing to you if this one's not happy. But that very, very simply just summarizes how I am using um, classmarker.com to set short tests for my students just as a way of getting more feedback without actually giving me lots of extra work. I hope it's been useful. Thanks again. See you soon, and keep it real.